Good evening, folks. It's Pepperbelly here, and we have a beautiful afternoon. So I just got back from having sex with lots and lots of bodaciously sexy women. Which, actually, no, I didn't. I'm just kidding. But anyway, we have a Grant Apocalypse. Oh, shit. Actually, not really, no. It's actually... <laughs> it's not scary at all. I mean, if we had a... G I mean, look at this. Come on. It's just, like, confetti and children laughing. And, I mean, this is just what every person wants. I mean, every family can just get in on killing grunts. So, if there was ever a Grumpocalypse in real life, all you really have to do to these harmless little bastards is just get, you know, give your kids some water guns. Let them run free and just start, you know, killing some grunts or something. I don't know. Like, anyway. Uh, basically, this is a game type that's created on... Created. It's basically a game type. It's score attack in the matchmaking uh, variants list, and it basically is a solo firefight that you can do. Um, it compares your score with your friends. So basically, you have it just gives you bragging rights. Really, I don't see the point of it. It also does help you. It's really fun though. I mean, if you feel like you want to just go online and kill some crap by yourself, this is absolutely the greatest game type for it. I mean. Uh, my two personal favorites would be that Sniper Fest one, I don't know what that is. It's basically you just got a sniper rifle and a magnum with unlimited ammo, I don't really remember the name of it exactly. And then Grunt Apocalypse, which is just this right here, where you just get a DMR, a magnum, and you just keep popping grunts in the head and watching the confetti go, and it just never gets old. It's just fun, good stuff, and uh, yeah, it's very enjoyable. But anyway, I was talking about how I was going to bring this video to you. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time, but I will try desperately to explain as best I possibly can uh, in this short amount of time. Basically, um, if you played the game at all, or if you are familiar with Halo 2 and you were uh, a noob, if you want, you know, if you'd say, uh, basically this tactic is, well, it's not even a tactic really, it's just, it's noob combo. If you're familiar with noob combo, it's basically a plasma pistol charged up, like that grunt has right there and he shoots you, your shields are completely gone, and you finish off the guy with, uh, you know, a one-shot gun to the head. And in Halo 2, that was a battle rifle most of the time, you know, or a Magnum, but a Magnum was crappy in Halo 2. Uh, was nearly, not nearly as good as it was here in uh, Halo 3, or indefinitely in this, or Halo 1 for that matter. Magnum couldn't compete with that. Halo 1's still the best. Uh, which brings me to another issue, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm trying to keep this on track. So, Legendary, just the Elites, I mean, they were once fearsome, and now they're like cute and cuddly just like the Grunts you're seeing right here. <laughs> they're no longer to be feared. When you have a Plasma Pistol, they cower like pansies because, oh crap, my shields are gone, I can still run really fast, but I mean, you can't beat a bullet, can you? I mean, no matter how fast you run, you can't outrun a bullet, so you shoot them in the head, there you go, they're dead, no worries. Uh, well, unfortunately for the Brutes, this doesn't work as well, but I mean, I remember I think it was three or four shots in the head. Basically, you have to take off their shields first, or their shields, their helmets, just like these grunts right here that I'm, you know, shooting at. The white one comes with a helmet on it, and you can see me sometimes, it takes me two shots, like right there. See, he got his helmet off and then blew his head off. So, like, some of these guns don't, or some of the enemies actually, you, they have helmets on, so the only way to kill them is to shoot their helmets off, which... Another example right there, that grunt's still alive because of it. Uh, but basically, you just shoot them in the head until their helmet falls off. It can be two to three rounds. Depends on uh, how accurate you are, where you're shooting them in the head, and which gun you're using. And then you kind of just finish them off with one shot to the head. So usually you want to be accurate on that, so don't fire retardedly fast. You know, this is definitely one tactic I've been using. I've been learning lately, and I've been watching other people's commentaries, and I kind of saw this tactic being used, well, not from him actually explaining it, but just from watching the way they play. And basically fire the BMR, or BMR, the DMR really slow. I was thinking of battle rifle there for a second. Fire the DMR really slow, and it basically can counter attack any person who's trying to shoot this thing as fast as they can because you're going for well-placed, accurate shots into their skull. So they're not going to be able to... I mean, they could shoot as fast as they want, but if they're not going to be hitting you in your head, and, like, they're not hitting you in your head, you're fine. So, when you're going slow, I find, it, personally, it does a little bit more damage. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but when you're putting nice, accurate rounds into the person's head over and over again, you can actually see his shields failing, and you're just like, ha-ha, oh, yes. Just a few more rounds, and you're just watching it, and all of a sudden the shields give out, and you're like, yes, and you put a round right through his head, and it just makes you 
the happiest kid in the world. Or adult. <laughs> Whatever. Or a psycho, you know, it just depends on who's playing this game, you know, there are a lot of creeps. <laughs> anyway. So the noob combo, definitely the number one tactic I've been using. Uh, that actually got me through the entire game. Um, vehicle combat, no need to get into that. It's not as bad as you think, it's simple as that. I mean, you don't take as much damage as you think you would. Uh, but still, once your vehicle is damaged, please change it. Because I've been learning that, if you, unlike Halo 2 and all that other stuff, it doesn't ride on your health. So if your vehicle is actually severely damaged and on fire, your shields will, if they're even halfway depleted, you're going to blow up. Simple as that. So you're probably going to be yelling and cursing. Before you do that, just listen to that right there. That is what happens. If you are yelling outrageously angry and all that, because your vehicle constantly keeps exploding even though you still have full health, that is the reason why. Because your vehicle damage actually does depict whether or not uh, it'll explode quicker or not. So, oh, also, this is kind of a spoiler, but this is one thing, tactic I've kind of done in the game which makes life so much easier. Um, when you're on that mission, I mean, this is kind of a spoiler, so if you don't feel like listening to it, go ahead and turn away. But basically when you're at Dr. House's lab, or Halsey's lab, and uh, you're about to, you know, go inside and she asks you to hold off all the uh, enemies and you got those automated turrets and whatnot, grab a jetpack and just hijack the crap out of some poor elites. Banshee. I mean, once you have their Banshee, you are pretty much invincible, almost. You still die repeatedly, you still will get... Just, you'll get a lot more checkpoints than you think. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, you basically can fly around for, away from danger all the time, and you can get more score that way, and which levels you up quicker, too. So, one of the things I did, which is pretty cool in ninja style, if I do say so myself, is when I see another Banshee flying towards me, and my Banshee's really, really damaged, they're going to kill me pretty damn quickly. So, the only way for me to counter that, instead of jumping out of it and waiting for opportunity, I basically just fly head-to-head -head right against that uh, Banshee, pull up slightly, like right when I'm about to slam into the head of it, just go straight vertical, jump out, activate the jetpack, and hijack it in midair. All do, like, you do the whole thing in midair, and it actually worked. It was a really effective way of me hijacking that, and that was one of the things I almost forgot to mention. I don't remember what else I want to say, but... Anyway, that was the tactics. Take it slow too, you know. Use the crouch button. Take cover. Really take your time with it, you know, and take go for well placed shots and be relaxed. It'll take a long time if you're not really good at it. For me it took a while, but it was great. So I got through it, got the achievements, and I had fun. So please rate, subscribe, and leave a comment if you want, and I will be coming out with a new video. Maybe not soon, but soon enough. Take care.